midst of chaos, we find out who we are. I feel nothing. But yet, I feel everything. Because I've already faced chaos. I've seen it. I've lived it. Let's go! Give it your all! Give it your all! What is it? Let's go! I'm not scared anymore. I can't change what happened. Life doesn't work like that. It keeps moving forward. So I do the same. I felt turmoil. My hero murdered. People say I'm sorry. I don't feel sorry for myself. Stop, they said. You can't do it, they said. That's not me. I just keep moving. That's who I am. Racing, it's always been a passion. Ever since I was little, I wanted to do this professionally. Dirt racing, it's all slicing and dicing, will to will. And look out, we've got a new race leader. It's just one big adrenaline rush. It's all about timing, I would say. Timing and, and guts. You gotta have the guts to fit it in places no one else will. Once you get in the car, it's all you. If I mess up, I know it's my fault. It's no one else's fault. The speed and the competitiveness. I love it, I guess. He just has a drive in him like no other. Brendan has not come from a wealthy family and He's dominated a lot with things that didn't cost a lot. They're allowing it, but it's still holding it on there. Wisely, he has the race seat. He has been going to the races since birth. Every time we were around it, you could just see his face light up. Brendan was very interested in things that go fast. It's fun to gas it and go around the track. This is what he Breeze, sleeps, eats, is racing. Brendan was race, race, race. This is where I really found out I wanted to go fast. I'd always take this little three-wheeler up the hill with a baseball helmet on, because she'd get mad if I didn't have it on. And I'd try and go as fast as I could down the little hill. Always go higher and higher until she made me stop, you know? He looked like a little space ball going down the hill. He got into a car at four when his dad told me that we bought him a car and it showed up at the house. <laughs> this was my very first ever junior sprint. I'd probably say it's my third time out on the racetrack ever. That's crazy, look at me, I'm a little bit, I don't even think, no. Nope. Is that? I, I still got, I still got two feet there. Nope. That was right before my accident, I would say. Yeah. The racing environment is different than any environment. I feel like that's always helped our family bond a little bit more. My great grandpa raced, my grandpa raced, my dad raced, my uncles raced, my cousins still raced. I've been around it forever, you know, it's, it's definitely in my blood. 
Who do you think has helped you the most in your racing career? Ooh, that'd probably probably be Donnie. He definitely taught me a lot and got me where I need to be, I guess. Uncle Donnie, he really isn't Brendan's uncle, but we called him Uncle Donnie. He just has helped a lot throughout the years. I used to run sprint cars. Those are trophies from me when I was young. A lot of trophies through the years. I raced a long time, had a lot of fun. I started driving sprint cars, uh, actually dirt champ cars in 1982. My second year I won the championship and went on to win uh, 14 championships at Tulsa. All I can ever remember has been at the racetrack. I still go today. That's all I've ever done. My son was Donnie Ray. At eight years old, we built Donnie Ray his first car. Donnie Ray dominated our area at the time. Everybody looked up to Donnie Ray around here. My biggest role model would have been Donnie Ray. He's definitely a big impact on the way I am today. Brendan, he's a humble, hardworking young man. And if he had not had his accident, I don't think he'd be a different person at all. July 3rd, 2008, we were at the race shop. The grass was high, so they were like, oh, we'll mow the grass to get it taken care of. My oldest son was driving, and Aniston and Brendan decided to get on with him. At first, I had just saw Brendan on it, and I was like, I want to get on there with you guys, and so they let me. My sister was sitting on the front left side of the deck. I was sitting on the right side. We turned left and kind of hit a bump at the same time. My sister fell off head first. And my first reaction was, you know, just to grab her. So I reached down and I grabbed her. And when I grabbed her, I put my right foot down and my brother turned right. I remember laying on the ground and I seen how much blood I was losing. So I took my shirt off and I wrapped it around my leg. I actually got up and tried to take a couple steps and realized I couldn't walk. We need to get help, so I ran to my dad as fast as I could. When the ambulance got there, they got some IVs in me, took me to the hospital, and it goes, goes blank. We went to St. Francis, the doctor, took a look at Brendan and told me I had to weigh the options of the different types of amputations to do. And then we had to make the decision to go ahead and cut it off through the ankle. And that's known as a syme. I was scared. As a parent, you don't want your child to be looked at as different. I asked my doctor, when's the next time I can get on the track? He told me I'd probably never walk again on my own. And then racing, he told me I'd never get in a car. It really hurt. I was at rock bottom. From there on, I was going to prove him wrong. He just kept telling me, I'm going to be on the track, Mom. I'm going back. As long as I kept my spirits up, it was going to be OK. So the only way to go from there was up. I knew that racing was going to be what would get him back to the normal Brendan, and we went for it. I was nervous. I was very nervous about it all. Brendan, who's only seven, modified his race car, and hanger prosthetics made Brendan an emergency prosthetic foot so he could get back out here. Just one week after the accident. I don't have feel, I don't have movement in the ankle, so I just lift my leg up and down so I can use my knee and my thigh muscle to push the gas. First time, it was kind of weird. But now he's getting up to speed 
and winning his share of races. You know, not every little kid has that push that they need. Since my accident happened, Donnie Ray was, he was just always there for me. He taught me to look at life in different ways. Anything he could do to help me, he would do. He always lived his life wanting to help others. In 2008, same year as my accident, a girl was racing at I-44. She actually got in a wreck and flipped. That's where my story begins. I grew up in a racing family. Um, my dad raced, my grandpa raced. You know, why can't I race? And I was 12 years old then. So we loaded up and, and went racing. I-44 Speedway, and first race ever. I remember like coming out of turn four, I kind of hit the wall a little bit down the front straightaway. And oh, trouble! Big time trouble down in turns one and two. And flipped over on its side and with me trapped inside. Oh, no. For some reason, my car started as a little fire. Then it, it just exploded. Donnie Ray was sitting in the car in the staging area and saw that it was taking forever to put the fire out. I can hear people screaming and yelling. Most awful screams you've ever heard in your entire life. After a good eight to 10 minutes long of me being trapped inside, I gave up. I remember out of like the corner of my eye, I see this guy running towards me. I don't know who it was. Oh my god. Is that Donnie Rice? Is that Donnie Rice? Oh my god. Oh my god. Not even thinking about what, you know, what could happen or if he could get hurt. I mean he just ran over there. Donnie Ray literally just started sprinting and ran into the fire. He grabbed for her seat belts to get it undone. He pulls me from the car. Next thing you know, I open my eyes and I'm laying on the ground right next to the car. And I remember Donnie Ray jumping on top of me. I didn't know what he was doing until afterwards, and apparently my whole right side of my body was still on fire. Donnie Ray saved my life. It's just amazing how he went in that fire. She was within probably a few seconds of not making it. Without Donnie Ray, I wouldn't be here. Donnie Ray is my hero. How are you doing? Good, John. How are you? Good, good. We both went through pretty traumatic accidents. It's really nice to know people like that because two different stories you can talk about. You know, sometimes it helps you get through things. Puts a soft spot in my heart for sure. It's easy to give up. It's always easy to give up, but it takes a little bit of strength to, to keep going. And that's, that's what's exciting about Brendan and I. You know, we're, we're still racing and we don't let just some minor issue set us back. Everybody deals with situations differently, and if he wants to accomplish something, he's going to. Sky is the limit on everything. I am so proud of him for just not giving up. Someone tells me I can't do something, I'm gonna make sure I do it. I just keep telling myself, you gotta keep pushing. My coach in middle school, he's like, you should come try out wrestling. So I tried out wrestling. By week two, he was one of the leaders in our junior high, which is crazy to think for a kid that had just started. From the beginning, we knew it would be hard for a kid to score if he stayed low. 
He wanted to dominate. He wanted to win every single match. He wanted to prove that he had no kind of disability whatsoever. Wrestling, it's another thing like racing. It's an individual sport. If you mess up, you mess up. So who wants it more? Part of wrestling is your attitude and being able to persevere and fight through things. And I'm not sure I've met a kid that's had to fight through more than what he has. So the two kind of went hand in hand. I was 18. My parents got a divorce. And it was actually a really, really bad divorce. It just really, it really sucked there for a while. My dad was there when he wanted to show up, not really when we needed him there. As a child, I was on his hip everywhere we went. I would do anything to have him in my life. Going into that match, I really wasn't into the right mindset. Let's go, Brendan! I was looking up in the stands, hoping someone was there that I should have known wasn't going to be there. Brandon Wisely from Sand Springs. This looks pretty tight. And that's it. I should have just had my mind focused and ready to go. That's why I race in now. When I get to the track and I put my helmet on, I don't think about anything else besides what I need to do. for Brendan Darnay was everywhere. Both a lot alike in a lot of ways. Had a lot of things in common. I look up Donnie Ray. I always asked him, you know, what is it like to be a role model? And he's like, you just gotta be yourself. You gotta be kind to everyone else. And you achieve your goals and people see that. The week of a chili bowl, Donnie Ray had won that week, and so he was already in the A feature and going to be running the big race. We've caught up here with Donnie Ray Crawford. So far, we've had a great chili bowl. It's been hard times and bad. God always has a plan for you. A lot of times, people, you have death and family, you think why me, but the important thing the Bible says is, is keep your faith. That's what I've always been able to do, and, and, and that's why my relationship with Jesus is close. That morning of the chili bowl, I woke up and I don't know why, I just had this feeling in my stomach that was something was wrong. And on the way, an ambulance passed us. Donnie Ray walked into his parents' room to talk to them and his grandpa had come in and put a gun in the bell of his back and shot him in front of his parents. We was helping my father-in-law. He lived with us. We really don't know why and what, but you know, uh, unfortunately, he just came in our room shooting, and Donnie was in there talking to us. And unfortunately, it was uh, Donnie's last day. Twenty-four-year-old local hero Donnie Ray Crawford was shot and killed. Crawford died Saturday in what authorities say was a senseless, unprovoked shooting by his maternal grandfather. I would have to call it just a mental illness case. It's such a terrible feeling. It's just really tough. I I think I think it was just a somebody put on this earth to make a difference. That's kind of what he did. I know he's up there smiling, looking down on us. He was definitely an angel that walked on the earth. I'm proud of him. You know, he's got a legacy that will never, never be forgot. And so I'm proud, same way I'm proud of him. Even though I miss him, I'm proud of him. If you could say anything to your son now, what would it be? 
Oh, it, it'd probably just be I love you and miss you. And thank you. Donnie Ray was, uh, he was like a big brother to me. He was an angel on earth. You know, he's my hero. Brennan, he does fill a big void. We're lucky to have him. He's just like a son to me, and he always will be. So you need any more spring on it? Would more spring make you feel it better? I mean, it could. Mm -hmm. That's something you need to think about. So if possibly put more spring on it. I don't know. I might, uh... I might try one more spring on it. Mm -hmm. Donnie's been like a father figure to me. He's taught me everything I know about cars. He definitely filled the role. He's just a, it's another image of a, a son that I've lost. Go get him. Oh, All you can do now is go get him. I know. Car's ready. I just gotta be ready now. Mm -hmm. Be ready. Thank you. Donnie and, and the Crawfords taught me to be humble, very humble. Live life like there's no tomorrow and treat everyone the way you would want to be treated. Good evening, race fans, and welcome to Port City Raceway, the championship night of the 10th annual Donnie Ray Crawford Memorial. When it's all said and done, what really matters? Racing is my escape. You win, you lose. You keep moving. Some of life's chapters can be daunting. We all have a story. What once haunted our past can one day become an element that defines us for good. Everything that has happened to me has made me who I am. Our legacy is dependent on the people we share life with. The memories, and the people. That's what matters.